Kentonville and Lock on ACC. In terms of not having the flashes, recruiting classes on paper and all that, not having a ton of five stars and all that come through your program, Pitt is still consistently at the top in terms of producing NFL talent and how many guys get drafted every year. Can you speak to player development and how you all make that happen? Well, I think it's, you know, it starts with player development. It, it starts with evaluations, okay? I mean, obviously we need coaches to coach our players and develop the guys that you're seeing on stage up here. Um, but you also need to have an eye for talent, I think. And, you know, I really trust our evaluation process. And it comes down to, you know, I, I, I would say we're the total opposite of being lazy in the evaluation process. I mean, whether it's a guy in the portal, but we, we, you know, the portal's full of guys. But, you know, we got a couple scholarships still available right now but I haven't chosen to go out there and use those in the portal because there's nobody really that I go, oh, we want that guy, okay? Uh, so we're gonna be very picky with who we take. Um, you know, we got some guys on our football team, I think are pretty good football players that will, you know, hopefully at the end of uh, August, give those, those guys a scholarship and, and, and reward, reward those guys. But, uh, you know, I think it comes down to our evaluation uh, process, I think, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know the exact number, but a few weeks ago, they kind of re-ranked our 18 class or something like that, set it ranked in the top 10. So I don't care where the rankings are. We don't, you know, recruit stars. I'm not looking to have the flashiest uh, recruiting class because all those stars don't matter. Some people just recruit stars. Always oh, a four star, four star guy. Let's take him. Um, we're not going to do that. You know, we try to avoid that and and, uh, and and look for the best possible football player that fits our program. Coach Paul is center aisle, right up there to your left. Noah Hiles, Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Pat, uh, there was a lot of talk yesterday, just in general, about NIL legislation and guidelines. If you could change one thing about the current NIL landscape, what would it be? Well, Noah, uh, good to have you down here. I appreciate you making the effort to come down. Um, you know, I think the most important thing is, is uh, if I had to you know, put it, there, there's got to be a lid on it, right? I, mean, I think everybody wants to play under the same rules. And, you know, it, it, National Football League, they have a salary cap. I think you want to have some type of salary cap. This is what you're allowed to spend. Um, but you can't have, you know, universities that maybe have 75,000 students. You know, those guys are all former alumnus at, at some point. And when you have 16,000, you know, all that thing is going to, you know, it's going to matter. So I don't, it can't be based on how big your university is because we'll start building more dorms and, you know, what are we doing? But we've got education that is, is a priority and we're not going to have classes full of thousands of kids. We're going to have small class sizes. And again, we're going to have small alumni groups as, as, they, as they matriculate through uh, the University of Pittsburgh. So I think there's got to be a lid on the thing. There's got to be some type of, if you're going to leave the portal open, there's got to be a salary cap so people can't just go overspend. To your right, Coach, third row. We're getting the microphone again, please. You had it at the, at the end there. Try it here. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Right, cool. This is Chris Heidel from Perfect Memory Radio in Baltimore. You guys are playing in Yankee Stadium this year against Syracuse. How cool is it playing in that Yankee in that famous ballpark? You know, it's really cool. Uh, last time I was there, uh, you know, we didn't win a game in that park, so you know, we'll be working working hard to go back there. You know, you always kind of think about I mean, Yankee Stadium and the, the prestige of going into that facility in New York. Um, you know, at three thirty, uh, I believe the, the game time is. Um, so. It, 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 it'll be a fun game, and again, as a coach, I always look back to hey, what happened last time I was there, and we'll make sure that doesn't happen. So uh, that, that's Coach Coach Scott. Coach, back to Dan in the front row to your left. Coach, as one of the longest tenured in the ACC right now, just what you can say about the brand that the Atlantic Coast Conference has brought to football, and just what you've seen going up against the teams that you've had from year in and year out as one of the coaches that has had a lot of time in. Right, you know, it's interesting. I spent eight years in the Big Ten before coming here. You know, obviously as a defense coordinator, not a head coach, but now eight years in the ACC. And and you know, I personally, and again, it's no slam to you know to the Big Ten offense. It's a heck of a conference as well. Um, but I look at the quality of players in the ACC, and you know, maybe it's because it stretches down the Atlantic Coast, you know, the, the Atlantic Coast from Miami up to Boston. Um, but it's just the quality of athletes. It's different, and you know. And I look at it in the defense perspective, you know, some of the receivers that we got to defend, I felt like we didn't have to defend that, you know, back in the day, um, you know, in the Big Ten. Uh, and then I think when you look at the quarterbacks, I mean, uh, I think we had 12 different quarterbacks start the NFL from the ACC last year. That's impressive. You know, we got one right next door in Kenny Pickett. But I just think the quality of quarterback, I mean, we know the game starts with the quarterback play, correct? Um, you know, you can have a, a, you know, a left guard or a center position or a defensive tackle, but when you talk, you know, college football, 
and, and some of the best football comes from quarterbacks. I mean, you look at Trevor Lawrence and all the quarterbacks that the ACC has produced. Um, you know, I look back in, in the Big Ten and look at, you know, we had one of the premier guys in Kirk Cousins, but when you look at the Big Ten in the last, you know, really 16 years, who are those guys that are starting the NFL? Kirk Cousins is, is probably the most popular one that you're thinking at this point. I may have missed somebody, but no disrespect. Got about six minutes left, but Coach will go to the left side. Coach, almost towards the wall. Hey, Coach, Tony Syracuse from last one on sports. Talk about, if you can, the with the calendar, especially in December, has done to coaching when you've got the early signing period, the transfer portal window, presumably trying to get ready for postseason play and recruiting all at the same time. What has that done? What do the changes look like for you in December? Yeah, I would say as a college football coach that two worst months of the year are December and, uh, and June. Um, you mentioned all the things that are happening in, in December, the Saturday Day Bowl games, you know, uh, you know, the portal opens up and you're, you know, you're wondering you know, what's going to happen there and what do you need, what are you, what are you losing. Um, you know, June is the same way. Uh, the next year, um, you know, I guess now we're going to say, you know, July 15th, excuse me, August 15th, we can now have, uh, no, July 15th, have some type of written communication with, with our, that 25 class, which is, again, another one, like, why, why did we do that? Like, this year it's, it's uh, August 1st, next year it's another 15 days, it used to be September 1st. We keep moving that, you know, a month and a half earlier now, and you're just making June a little bit more miserable for, for college coaches and, and our college staff, so I feel bad for our guys, but, you know, I think some of the answers in December, and I'm not, look, not sure if you're looking for answers, is to move that signing day up, in my opinion. I think we've got to move it up to, you know, the end of June. I mean, the kids all just visited the end of June or maybe August 1st when camp starts. Uh, you know, just move that date up and, and let's get it rolling. And, and, you know, I was talking with someone this morning at breakfast and talked about how really dead the month of August is as far as just, you know, stuff going on. Let's, let's, let's move, let's, let's get into, you know, the sign of being August. Coach Paul, the center aisle all the way to the back. That's where we'll find David Teal. Good morning, Pat. David Teal, Thank you, David. Richard Times Dispatch. This year starts a stretch of seven times in 14 years you will play Notre Dame. Do you like that arrangement? I mean, that's as frequently as you play some of your comp most of your conference rivals. Yeah, I don't know how that is, um, but we, we embrace that. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking forward to, to going up to South Bend and um, playing it with my previous stop, and we enjoyed that game. It's a big game, and our kids will be cranked up for that game. So, you know, whatever the ACC says, hey, you're playing Notre Dame, or you're playing Clemson, it doesn't matter who we play, uh, we, we embrace that. Coach, front row to your right. I'm sport coach from WKTCFB Nation. Um, you guys truly match the identity of your city, that blue, blue collar, hard hat, steel mill type of workers. Um, how did you guys arrive to that? You got a great defensive week. You guys can rush the passer, arguably the best secondary in the ACC. How did you guys get there? I like you, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you feel good today. Um, you know, we're from a tough city, you know. You know, I, I look at myself, you know, growing up in Youngstown, how kind of a tough, you know, tough neighborhood, tough place. Um, so to me, to me, we embrace that toughness. And, and that's who I am. Whether I was in East Lansing or Oxford, Ohio, it doesn't matter where I've been, it's been about toughness. And, you know, we got a bunch of tough dudes here. We're going to be tough on, you know, all three phases of our game. And to me, it's what you coach every day. Our guys practice hard. Um, they play hard. Um, they work hard every day. And it's just part of our DNA. Coach, your final question from here at the podium, a bit of a follow-up to that. When you think about culture and having to replace a quarterback for a second straight season, how do you maintain culture knowing that you've got that type of turnover to key position? Yeah, uh, when you look at the quarterback position and transfers, I, you know, I read an article you know, early in the summer just about the amount of quarterbacks that go in the portal. It's probably one of that, you know, that position that's going to move around as, as much as possible. But, uh, you know, the one thing I'll tell you about our family our, our football team is they bring everybody in and it's a lot easier to bring a guy in like Phil Jakovic, our quarterback it's a Pittsburgh native Pine Richland guy I mean he's back home and uh, but you know when we look at bringing those guys in and you look at our roster of guys that we brought in the portal we're bringing back guys that we previously recruited we worked hard at getting them the first time um, and uh, didn't get them the second time uh, when it went to BC you know uh, we wanted a bad we had a guy named Kenny Pickett I couldn't guarantee him, him being the starter um, you know, with, with Kenny Pickett being there, and then you know we got lucky, and uh, we will get his last and final and his best season he's ever had. Coach, thank you. You can switch places with MJ. MJ, you've got the podium for about five minutes, and 